Hi, this is Bill Papoon, Managing Partner at Construction Science. And this is an introduction to our training program. I'm going to be talking about project portfolios in this segment. And there's two things I want to make quite clear. Our virtual training sessions are always live. We created these recordings only to give you an idea of what they look like. However, at no time will you be watching a pre-recorded segment. All of the training sessions are led by me, so that if you have any questions, you can stop me. And you also have the ability to take over my screen. I can actually have you try the things that I'm showing you here with the program. Also, in a normal training program, you will be able to see my web camera. GoToMeeting, the software that we use for these sessions, unfortunately doesn't record my web camera during these uh, training sessions. All right, so let's talk about portfolios. Most of you are probably familiar with the idea of the enterprise project structure. Now on my screen, it might look a little odd. I'm going to switch back here and regroup my portfolio by the EPS. Now when we look at this, you see that I have many subfolders, or what Primavera calls nodes, in my EPS database. On a regular basis, most of these projects are not something I need to worry about. I would always like to have the project that I'm working on be at the top of the database. Now at the very top of the database, we always see the name of our organization. So in my case, it's Construction Science. From that point down, it's all up to me. And then another exercise, we'll talk about how to reorganize the database folders. But not all of us are allowed to do this. In a larger organization where we're sharing this database, you may not be able to change the order of these folders. So if you're the unlucky person who sort of happens to be way down at the bottom of the screen, this is literally where you'll have to come every time you want to see your projects. But I'm going to show you a nifty trick that allows you to always have your projects at the top of the screen, regardless of what anyone else is doing. And it will not affect anyone else. The person who normally reorganizes the database, what we call the admin super user, once they set the order here, it will appear the same on all screens normally. And I say normally because the portfolio is a way of getting around that. So everyone who logs into the database would normally see exactly what I'm looking at. They would see this particular folder for granite construction at the very top. A little bit further down, they see Swinnerton. But with the portfolio, I can see on my screen a customized view of the database that does not affect anyone else. And let's do this. At Enterprise, we come down to Project Portfolios. And you'll notice there's some portfolios that are called Global. What that means is that if I want to create a small portfolio of projects and share it with other people in the organization, I would add it right here. I'm going to come down to the bottom of the screen, however, and you'll notice that I have several portfolios under the user category. So I'm going to highlight one of these here and then add a new portfolio underneath it. And I will just call this a sample portfolio. In some cases, you can see that I've created them based on a person's name. But if you think about it, we could even create portfolios for groups of projects that we'd like to keep distinct. I could have, for example, highway projects all together. I could also have my educational projects in a separate portfolio. So now that I've created this portfolio, I'm going to add some projects to it. Come down here and click on the word projects. Then you see the word assigned down here. This is going to allow us to go into the EPS database and select our projects. So this is a replication of the database itself. We simply scroll through it and find the ones that we would like to select. Double click on each one of these with your left mouse button. It becomes part of our portfolios. There you see one has appeared. I'm going to go a bit further down and start picking a few more. And I'll pick one last one here, so we have six. I close this out. You see the six projects listed here. 
we're going to close this. Now we're going to open up that portfolio. We come over here to File, Select Portfolio. By default, Primavera normally shows you every project that's available to you in the database. You may not be seeing all the projects in the database, depending on your access rights and privileges, but normally you will see every project appear on the screen that you have uh, access to. The new one that we add, that portfolio typically is pushed to the bottom of the screen, and there you see it, Sample Portfolio. I select it, and notice on the screen that now we're just seeing a few projects. Here's the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and then we should see two more. There they are. Now this isn't so great, and you might have noticed that when we started this exercise, I wasn't showing all these folders. So we're going to modify that again because it makes this much easier for us to find the projects we actually selected for our portfolio. I'm going to right click within the table, and by table I mean everything to the left of the Gantt chart here. So I right click, come down to Group and Sort, come up to Customize, and under Customize, you'll see there's an option here that says Hide if Empty. Not real obvious, but what it's telling you is that we can hide all of the empty folders. Let's hit the Apply button to get a preview of this. Now, we don't have to always hit the Apply button. If we know that the change we're making is satisfactory, then all we have to do is hit OK. So here we are the six projects, and only the folders to which they pertain appear on the screen. Now I can actually strip this down even further. I don't have to show these folders. It can be nice because I have a reference here. What folder in the EPS did these projects come from? But if I just want to see literally a list of my projects, I go back to Group and Sort, so I right click, come down to Group and Sort, it's not real obvious, but these projects are organized by EPS, the EPS folders. Let's come down here to List, and notice as soon as I selected List, now it's very clean. I literally see only the projects listed here. And any data that appears in a column is something that we can sort by, similar to an Excel spreadsheet. Notice what happens when I click on the project ID. I can sort them alphabetically, A to Z, or Z to A. But that's true of every column. Any sort of data that appears in a column is something that we can sort by. We can sort by the data date of the projects, the start date of the projects, the date that the project was added to the database. Sometimes I do this because I might be looking in a very large database for a project I know we added on a particular date. By organizing it this way, I can quickly find it, even if I don't remember the name of the project. But other fields, such as project budgets, things like the risk factor, which projects do I consider to be the highest risk? We'll talk about that in another exercise, but I can also sort by that information. I can have the highest risk projects appear at the top of the screen and the lowest ones towards the bottom. Now again, I can organize all projects in list mode by right-clicking. I'm sorry. Let's go back here first to File. Select Portfolio, and let's go all the way back up to the top of the screen, and choose All Projects. So once more, in my case, you see dozens and dozens of projects without all of those folders or EPS nodes. And again, I can organize by any data field that is represented by one of these columns. And there's actually about 200 different data fields that we can organize by. That is the end of this exercise. I hope you found it useful. And please come back for our other uh, introductory exercises. Again, my name is Bill Papoon, Managing Partner with Construction Science. And you can reach us at www.constructionscience.com. Thank you.